In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the Arteza Everblend markers, as well as their brand of fine liners. Let's get to it. Hello guys. So this week, Arteza was actually very, very kind and sent me the 60 pack of Everblend markers to try out, as well as the 102 fine liner pen set, which is crazy. This video is not sponsored, but Arteza was kind enough to give me these for free. And they also gave me a discount link for you guys to use down in the description. So first of all, I have actually opened this. You can probably tell by the bend in this. So let's actually see this case. Um, on the website, when I looked on the website about this case, it looks sturdy and it looked great. The only thing was I was very skeptical when I first heard about these markers. So right off the bat, the first thing that really draws my eye is the sturdy case. Would I really be needing this case personally? No, but it is a very beautiful case. You know for a fact that all your markers will be very, very secure because it's got clips and Velcro, and the Velcro is pretty sturdy. So it has Velcro on the sides and it opens out like this. Do these come out? I assume so. Oh, that's, that's quite the sturdy Velcro. Oh my God. Okay, one was already out. I say it's definitely easier to pull them out than to put them back in, which is a pain, especially if you're going places. But for the most part, this case seems really, really solid. I just kind of wish that each tray came out separately because having this amount just right here and now is just, it's a lot. <laughs> like having, having a double row out at once would probably be better rather than two double rows, but okay. And okay, we have a spare row to put more markers in whether that be Arteza or other brands, because I have a lot of other brands of markers in my collection. So there are actually 60 colors. I'm actually really intrigued about these colors because when marker companies come out with markers, they always stick to the generic brights and I'm sort of skeptical that these are just gonna be the generic brights. I'm very grateful to Arteza for sending me this stuff, but I kind of would have liked to see the full color range because I know they do 120 set. But again, I'm very grateful and I'll, <laughs> I'll take what I can get. So with the markers, they look like this. They're very sleek. They are white and they are triangular barreled. Oop, <laughs> I've got that the wrong way, but this is the rose red color. So we have a bullet nib. Okay. I'm really curious to see how these would be. And there's also a chisel nib. Don't mind my hand, it's stained with green. I don't know how that happened. They were clean at the beginning of filming this video, but okay, life of an artist, I guess. Going back to the case for a second, this is just what I've noticed. There's like little color swatch cards. That's really, really cute. However, printed swatch cards and homemade swatch cards are two completely different things. It might look that way on the cap of the marker, but mm, whether it will perform that way is a completely different matter. <laughs> so this case also has a pouch at the back. I suppose this is where you can actually store the strap if it gets in the way, or like some paper of some sort, I don't know. Or maybe even the swatch cards that you can make yourself. Now I'm just gonna show you the fine liner pens. There's 102 pens in here. Like, what? I'm I'm blown away by the amount of colors that one can get in these sets. Just, it's insane. Now I did actually do a quick little test with these just to see if they were like some fine liners that I've, I've got in my collection. And I think that the ones that they're most like are the Stedler fine liners like the tri plus fine liners they kind of look like this they are very similar to a tri plus fine liner and each pen is a 0 0.4 and there are three trays so we have like a brights a pastels 
and darks. I'm not entirely sure if you're actually seeing the exact true color because my camera has a habit of blowing out colors. There are so many different colors. And even when you think the pens are the exact same color, they're not. So I'm actually really intrigued to swatch all of these. Now that we've seen the stuff, let's actually get to the swatching. So first we're going to start by swatching the markers. They were very pretty and vibrant in colour. However, they were the generic brights that I was expecting. Even though there were some standout colours that I wasn't expecting as well. So the colour selection for me is a very mixed bag of feelings. There is a lot of mid-tones in this set, which I don't find to be a bad thing. It's just something to note. Doing all these swatches actually took me the best part of an hour to do, which is insane. And I think it was mostly due to these fine liners. My experience with these fine liners is pretty standard. To be honest, there's not really much I can say about them. So I'll just leave my feedback for them while I'm actually doing the actual artwork and not just the swatches. So for this video, I actually did two separate pieces. I actually uh, did the same image twice, but one is with the colored lines and this is with the black. I'm not gonna judge too harshly, but having it at a 0.4 was way too thick. And in some areas I had to go even thicker. I'm actually no stranger too thick line work but at the same time especially areas like the nose and the eyes and the little lines that are all the details I had to use my 0.05 uni pin fine liner but the rest of it is all of the Arteza pen I'm actually going to do these two in markers now in terms of of testing out the entirety of the pen, I actually did this sketch right here. For those of you who do not remember this sketch or have never seen it before, this was actually from an old sketchbook of mine, which you can actually see in the top right hand corner. It was a sketch that I just wanted to do in general or perhaps for a video, but I didn't really have anywhere to put it. So it's been sitting in a sketchbook for about six months. So I thought I would do it for this video, considering she is the same character as the ones in these pieces right here. The reason why it is not done in any of the liners just yet and just pencil is because the fine liners in question are actually water soluble. So hopefully I can create something like a watercolor wash effect with those lines and I'm really excited to give that a try with this piece. So first of all we're going to talk about the fine liners. They were actually pretty standard. I think that's my overall thoughts and opinions of them. They're pretty standard. They were very similar to the Stedler Tri Plus fine liners. I have some of those and I haven't used them in a long time because I tend to favour either black line art or pencil crayon line work, not really the pens. And the reason why I don't really particularly favour that kind of line art is because when you layer pen on top of each other, they get darker. And this is with every pen that you use they're not really a consistent colour upon layering and I kind of prefer more consistency in my line work. That's just me. What shocked me about this set was just how big it was. Like, I knew I was getting fine liners. It didn't fully hit me that there was 102 in the set until they actually arrived at my door. <laughs> so that definitely threw me off straight away. The colour selection in terms of these pens is great, obviously, because there's so many of them. They are water soluble, which is again, standard. As somebody who loves doing a lot of watercolour work, you better believe that I was using that to my advantage in this case. The colours were bright and they were vibrant and very, very pretty. I think the only downside to this is with it being 102 set, if there is any colors that are dried up, it's probably because it got past quality control or something. I don't know, but 
There were two colours out of my 102 set that were dried up and the only reason why I'm putting much focus onto this is because one of the colours that I was going to use was pretty much completely dead and that was the perfect colour that I wanted to use. So imagine my disappointment when that was one of the only colours that was dead. This didn't annoy me too much because there was sort of a similar colour but not really. <laughs> But if I had been an actual customer and not just been sent these, I would have been annoyed, sad, even mad about it. £31.99 is a little bit on the steep side. I do think it is justified for the fact that this is a 102 set, but even so, if you're paying that amount of money for fine liners, you would want every single fine liner to be working properly. Now, I can use these fine liners, they're okay, but they're not really my cup of tea at the end of the day because they were a little bit too thick. Now, they're pretty standard at 0.4 in terms of their size. However, I tend to work 0.3 and under, so they were a little bit on the thick side for me and I had to use uh, a Unipin fine liner for some of the finer details in my pieces that I did for this video. But I did refrain from using them uh, too much because I wanted the main focus to be on the Arteza pens. Something I really wish Arteza did sell was something kind of similar to either a Micron or a Unipin fine liner where they actually have multiple sizes of say black. They do actually sell a 12 pack of black fine liners but I would assume they're kind of in the same sort of style as the fine liners they already have. I know a lot of different artists who don't really go for 0.4 pens, they usually stick under 0.3 like me. So it'd be really beneficial to actually have something for those artists who don't like as thick lines. It would actually be really great to have fine liners that were waterproof as well because at the moment all of the pens that they do for the fine liners have water-based ink which is water soluble and it's gonna smudge everywhere if you try and add water to it. I know that's an effect that some artists like and I actually use to my advantage in this piece but some artists they just want waterproof ink and these are not the fine liners for them. So the next thing we are going to be talking about is the markers. Probably what most people clicked on this video for, let's be honest. Now in terms of the drawings, I will say that the drawings are again of my character Alex. I thought that she would be the best to test out with the markers because of her colour scheme. Very bright and it definitely plays to the advantages of this set. Now the illustration will be done twice, one with black line art and the other with colour just to see the difference of how it could turn out. This gives me the opportunity to talk about the markers more in depth, what I thought and all the features and just everything in general. It also gives you guys the opportunity to see how well they would work with coloured line art. I'm going to start out by talking about the colours of these markers. They're very bright and they're bold and I feel like in some way that they're leaning more towards a darker colour palette. Is this a bad thing? No, but I'm also not entirely surprised by a lot of the colour choices in this colour story that we have going on. There were a few standout colours that don't usually appear in normal bright sets of markers and this was especially true for the Carolina Blue and the Watermelon Pink as well as the Apricot. I feel like those colours definitely were a really interesting addition. I actually really enjoyed using some of those wildcard colours. Now one I didn't use that does stand out to me is Carolina Blue. Carolina Blue stands out because it's a little bit more muted and it's just really pretty. The greys definitely also stand out as well because they have different undertones so that's definitely an interesting side to this colour palette. Another standout colour that I forgot to mention was Burgundy even though I didn't end up using it. The swatch was just beautiful. 
Something that I will mention is that these markers do actually have granulation depending on the type of paper that you use. Now the swatches were done on Canson mixed media paper and the final illustrations were all done on Dale Rowney hot pressed watercolour paper. The granulation was definitely more apparent on the mixed media paper than it was on the watercolour paper. Now you could argue I was using the wrong type of paper in terms of the watercolour but it's what I've been using for my projects lately so I thought it would be a really good comparison. These markers both come in a 60 set and a 120 set. I would have really liked to see the colour range of the 120 set because at the moment I assume that that is the full colour range. If I was to suggest something for Arteza to do with their 60 set is actually kind of take the other 60 colours that are in the 120 set and offer those as a separate 60 set. Now what I mean by that is that the set that I have could be the brights and the darks and the other set could be the pastels and the lights. Kind of like a sort of system that Spectrum Noir has with their 24 sets and they actually sell them as darks, lights, brights and pastels. Fun fact, my first ever big set of markers was actually the 24 lights set of Spectrum Noir bullet nib markers and they were the old generation barrels. And before anybody says anything, they weren't even hexagonal barrels, they were like the cuboid kind of barrels. Just to give you a perspective of how long ago that was, I got those when I was 15 and I am now 22. So I love those markers to bits. Getting back to the Arteza markers, they have a triangular type of barrel. Something else that has been mentioned by other people, and I kind of picked up on it as well, just going through it, is that the colour coding system sucks. I don't know what it is about companies who create markers, but they just can't seem to get the colour coding system in order. The numbers that are currently on the barrels might be okay in terms of production code, but in terms of artists understanding them, it's not on. It really isn't good. The artists cannot understand this. And I know for a fact that this isn't just a me issue. But something that I did notice, which I found a little weird and off, is the fact that you can't even see the names when you have the markers lying down on your desk. When the marker is lying down flat on the desk, the cap doesn't point upwards at me, so I literally have to pick it up to actually see the marker name and the code. And the fact that it doesn't even have it on the barrel, say if you lose the caps and you mix them up, that's not good either. I just wish a little bit more thought was put into this on the artist's perspective. Personally, I would have preferred a more crappy case and more priority spent on the markers themselves because the case was fantastic. It's great for travel, it's very sturdy, it can be deconstructed. I'd say the only issue is it takes up a lot of desk space, especially if you are a person that doesn't really travel too much and you just want the markers themselves. You really have no need for a case. Getting back to the markers themselves, they come with a bullet and a chisel tip. Now, that's not my personal preference because I prefer a brush tip, but I have used bullet nibs in the past. As I said, Spectrum Noir was my first and those are bullet nibs. In terms of blendability, the ink in these markers is fair. It's on par with the rest of the brands on the market, in my personal opinion. However, the tip just makes it really difficult to actually blend together properly unless it's a close together colour. Although something important to note personally is the fact that blending actually grew on me while using these markers. The very first picture, it took so long to get anything to blend decently, but once I'd gotten used to the markers, it felt better. I just think that picking them up for the very first time, it is incredibly hard to get into these markers and they definitely suit a more graphic style, which I find really ironic considering the name is actually Everblend. 
Doing this video was definitely very draining on me because while I was using the markers, I went through this cycle of thinking, oh, they're not bad, to, oh my God, I don't want to do blending anymore. It is awful, to, oh my God, it's it's all right. It's it's fine. That meme with the with the dog sitting in the fire. Yep, that was me the entire time throughout this video. I ended up delaying this video because of my yo-yoing thoughts and opinions put so much mental pressure and stress on me that I just could not make up my mind. I think the thing that people seem to forget about some other marker brands is that even with a bullet tip, they blend together beautifully. These markers, because the bullet nib is so hard and there is no give in it, it just makes blending them more difficult to do. I think that this could be a fix with a brush tip or possibly making the bullet tips a little bit more softer and more forgiving. The fact that this bullet tip is just so unforgiving is just making it less beginner friendly, if that makes sense. I really hate to say that because this set is definitely aimed more towards beginners, but that bullet tip could actually potentially be a beginner deterrent. This set definitely is more beginner friendly than it is long-term artist friendly. It's because there are no single stock markers and there are no refills. Something that I have noticed in terms of the Arteza websites on the American and the UK, because I'm in the UK and that's the one I would use, is the fact that the American site actually has more listings and more availability for things. So on the American website, there is actually a listing for single color markers. However, they're only available in packs of four which means if you only want one replacement marker, you are going to get three more markers than you're anticipating of the same color, which if you haven't got the room for it, that is just ridiculous. But something that is good that I have noticed is the fact that they're offering replacement nibs for the chisel and the bullet nib, as well as sets of skin tones and gray tones in sets of 36. This is great, however, they're not showing up on the UK site and that's a problem. This is something I've always had a problem with the Arteza site, is the fact that they would show on the American website but they would never give you an option uh, on any of the other sites that they have. I feel like if you're going to release an item for the US site, you should at least have it available everywhere else first before you release it because otherwise that's just really unfair. Fun fact, when I first found out about these markers, they were only available on the US site. They weren't available on the UK site at the time. So it just proves my point. It's not fair. And that possibly could be due to distribution rights or something or other like that. I'm not entirely sure how that would work, but it would be nice for actually the releases to be somewhat close together or at least to be organized that way because it just seems very unprofessional on their part. I can understand them only selling international paper sizes outside of the US because they don't really stock the international paper sizes on the US site but this is a completely different material with a completely different set of rules and for markers a lot of people like markers. I just think that they should be more inclusive on this front. So first I'm going to show off the fine liner piece of artwork. That's what that looks like. Just bring up the, to the camera just so you can see it a lot better. The colours are incredibly bright and vivid and the colours from the pens just melt really well. I would say if you are going to use them like watercolours, I'd say use them with watercolour paper. Layering them too much does actually make the paper shred a little bit. I don't know whether you can see, but it does have an effect on the paper when layering them too much. So then we have the two pieces that are the same, but are kind of different because one is done with black liner and the other is done with colour and I like them both. I think I prefer the one with black liner 
more because it kind of stands out a bit better. In my opinion, I feel like it suits better with a black line work sort of style rather than a coloured line art, but I thought I'd try it out to see how I would like it. I could have saved myself some time, but I think the experiment was worth doing for the video. I will say that these markers definitely favour a more graphic style. I did kind of push the boat out on blending. I really, really tried my best to get a smoother blend as I possibly could, but the tips of those markers just do not let you have like a super smooth blend. So yeah, with that being said, that is the end of this review of the Arteza Everblend markers as well as their fine liners. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can like and subscribe if you haven't already with the post notifications on for notifications for every single time I upload or live stream. I'm hoping to live stream a little bit more later this week, hopefully. So I will see you guys in my next video or live stream if you come along. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.